Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be primarily regarding what appear to be strong rumours and stories of Kyogo leaving Celtic to go back to one of the top J-League teams in Japan, one or two other stories of Celtic players uh, potentially coming and going, and also an update on a couple of players Celtic were said to be closely linked with and pursuing, um, and it would appear some of those deals are uh, ongoing and progressing, and one or two appear to have reached an end. As always, if you are new to the channel and you enjoy the video and enjoy the channel's content, uh, please do click that subscribe button, keep the numbers pushing up towards 600. Click, do click the like button as well if you like the video. It does help with YouTube circulating these videos and the channel to other Celtic fans and football fans. And as always, do feel free to pop your uh, own comments in the comment section. Please keep them pleasant, polite, constructive, and within all the rules of YouTube and the Scottish legal system. Now, as I said, um, several stories linking Kyogo Furuhashi with a move back to the J League. It would appear that Urawa Red Diamonds, one of the richest J League sides, are willing to break the J League transfer uh, record to bring. Kyogo back to Japan. The current J League transfer record stands at 10 million. And this would mean that Celtic would be more than doubling their price uh, they bought Kyogo for in 2021, which was 4.6 million. And it does look like uh, Urawa Red Diamonds are willing to pay 10, 11, 12, 13 million pounds for Kyogo, Kyogo to bring him back to. Japan. Kyogo has been Celtic's top scorer or equal top scorer in all three seasons with us. 20 goals in his first season, which was hampered by injury. Uh, then 34 last season, where he pretty much played the whole season, bar a few games, and 19 games, uh, 19 goals in 50 matches this season, a season where his form did dip, his confidence did dip, and he did seem to struggle with the change in Brendan Rodgers' mentality and tactics, which seemed to make him have a different role in the team and also did seem to cut off quite a bit of the service, which Kyogo thrived on, particularly in his 34-goal season. Um, Kyogo is rumoured to be the third best player paid player at Celtic and his contract with us does run to 2027 and so Celtic would not be under any obligation or necessity to sell Kyogo at this time and I personally would be surprised if Celtic do take the money for him unless Kyogo is desperate to get back to Japanese football. He does appear to have settled relatively well in Scotland he is improving his English steadily and is becoming more and more outgoing. And um, he has said on uh, multiple occasions that he does see his future in European football rather than going back to Japan at this time of his career. However, I think it's a story very much worthwhile uh, looking out for over the next week or two as to see whether that's uh, got any progress. Bit of uh, disappointing news, Cohen Castiles, a goalkeeper, many of us uh, really fancied coming to Celtic for the next season or when he left Wolfsburg uh, a few days ago, he has instead decided to go to take the big bucks in the Saudi league rather than moving to Celtic or Anderlecht or any other European club. Is a bit disappointing as I think he would have ticked nearly all the boxes for Celtic in terms of a Joe Hart replacement. Um, but it does appear he has decided he would prefer um, the mega box contracts in the Saudi League rather than coming to play Champions League football 
and winning trophies and medals with Celtic. Uh, no progress as yet on the uh, transfers for Daniel Amarty um, or Paolo Bernardo or clear progress on the deal for Adam Ida. It does appear that Celtic are still in negotiations with Benfica for, for Paolo Bernardo, um, uh, but uh, several stories suggest that that deal is cooling off. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether Adam Ida uh, will be released by Norwich for transfer. Norwich, of course, sacked their manager after failing to get promotion to the English Premier League. And so, in essence, when the new manager comes in, it'll be a clean slate. And so Ida might well move up the Norwich picking order. Uh, to be their number one first choice starter in their campaign to get back to the English Premier League. Um, I think probably Ida would prefer coming to Celtic, uh, Champions League football guaranteed, um, lots of medals, lots of trophies, almost guaranteed. And I think his career would most likely progress further and further at Celtic rather than risking uh, a fairly outside bet of uh, promotion next season with Norwich back to the English Premier League. Currently, things in the English Premier League tend to be a bit of a yo-yo status where teams get promoted one year, relegated the next, promoted again. And I can certainly see, te see teams like Burnley, Sheffield United uh, being more likely to go back up. I think there's also a lot of money um, in the West Bromwich Albion club um, and they are said to be keen to uh, take Mikey Johnston uh, from Celtic over the summer months back to West Brom where of course he had a very successful loan spell and fees of five million up to eight million are being mooted for uh, a possible Mikey Johnston transfer back to West Bromwich Albion. So um, I personally would love to see Adam Ida come back to Celtic. Um, I think he's proven uh, in his um, loan spell um, that he is uh, a player who can score goals for Celtic at the highest level. He scored a number of key goals and also a number of late goals uh, to win matches or at least put ourselves into very strong winning positions. And so I'd love to see Ida come back to Celtic. Talking of uh, young forwards that Celtic are also looking at, there is increasing speculation that Celtic are actively looking at Tommy Conway, the Scotland under-21 international who plays for Bristol. Uh, last season for Bristol, he scored 12 goals in 43 matches and over his Bristol career, 25 goals in 92 matches. Now, doesn't sound tremendously impressive, he has, however, been an under-21 uh, international star for Celtic, was said to be uh, on the, the borderline of being put in Stevie Clark's provisional squad for the European nations. Um, and uh, possibly more importantly, it's said that Tommy Conway is very keen to come back and play at the highest level in Scotland, uh, as he feels that's the best way he's going to push forward his Scotland full international career. Um, having looked at videos and stats, etc., Conway is a very interesting player, 21 years old, six foot one, and so would give us uh, quite a number of options up front, similar to the Adam Eda options. Um, uh, Conway also uh, good in the air, but uh, a very good uh, fast pit player, who can beat defenders with his burst of speed and is a good finisher as well. And I think he's a player that Celtic definitely should look at closely. And the indications are that Conway is keen to move uh, to a big Scottish club to move forward his career. number of players are said to be on the verge of leaving Celtic over the summer one way or the other. Top of the list would appear to be 
our South Korean forward Oh, there are said to be quite a number of European clubs lining up to sign him the clubs as yet have not been named um, but it does look like Oh might well be leaving Celtic permanently over the summer months another player said to be close to leaving Celtic is Gustav Lagabielka he was practically signing for Lecce in the winter window when Rodgers changed his mind and brought him back to Celtic. He played a few minutes in one game as a sub, uh, but otherwise didn't add any playing time in the second half of the season. I would personally be very sad to see Lagabielka go, because I think he's way better than um, Scales and um, Welsh, um, uh, but didn't really get a full chance to redeem himself after um, being sent off against Feyenoord, which seemed to have completely ruined his chances with um, Brendan Rodgers. As I demonstrated in a video um, previously, um, Lagabielka's defensive stats are right up at the top uh, of all Celtic central defenders. Um, he is Celtic's tallest central defender. He is uh, also... Um, Celtic's quickest um, central defender um, and does actually have good stats in all uh, relevant defensive stats and also uh, had a reputation in Sweden of being a very good passer and distributor um, and of course has now got two Swedish caps and is very much a feature of their uh, full international squad now but Rodgers does seem very, very keen to let him leave. Um, and there were a number of Italian clubs lined up for him, especially Lecce, who have managed to retain their place in the um, Serie A in Italy. Talking of Italian football, another player Celtic have been said to be interested in is Charles Piquel, a defensive midfielder, stroke central midfielder, currently playing for Cremonese in Serie B in Italy. Um, Cremonese are just about to go into the final of the Serie B playoffs for promotion to Serie A. Um, they won their semi-final a few days ago, uh, a game in which Celtic were said to have sent scouts to watch him and they are going back to see him again on Sunday in the Serie B playoff promotion final. Um, Having looked at um, videos and highlights, he didn't look the most impressive player. Um, and that was the general consensus of the other viewers and subscribers on the channel. Um, however, um, it will be seen whether Celtic do pursue any interest in uh, Charles Piquel. It did seem initially it was more just his agent was sending out his details to a variety of European clubs who were looking for a player in that mould rather than Celtic actively looking at him previously. But it does now look like we are at least running the rule over him to see whether uh, he's a player that fits into Celtic's um, style and way of playing. Just a couple of other wee updates. Um, Steve Welsh, a player who... Um, anybody who has watched the channel and my recent videos, a player I really don't rate. Uh, one of the players I gave a D rating to in the end of season ratings video from a day or two ago. There were quite a lot of rumours that Stephen Welsh was uh, being actively looked at by a number of uh, teams from the English Championship, a couple of say, our teams and also several teams in Major League Soccer. Uh, those stories circulated for a couple of days, but they now seem to have gone away. And so it does look like we're kind of lumbered with Stephen Welsh for another season or two, as he very much is one of um, um, Brendan Rodgers' favourite young players who seems to get endless chances, no matter the number of um, mistakes and goals he gives away. Other players said to be on the verge of leaving Celtic. Sead Haksabanovic does appear to be there are several um, clubs in Central Europe and Eastern Europe looking at signing him again. His loan deal at Stoke didn't really work out at all well. Stoke have no intention of 
uh, changing that loan into a permanent purchase and also his relationship with Brendan Rodgers uh, ended up being very poor just prior to the loan and so uh, I can see Haxa Vanovic uh, leaving over the summer most likely for a fee around the same as we bought him for. Other players who have been supposedly leaving Celtic um, in the next few days for the last couple of years, Yoki Kubiashi, Benjamin Segrist and James McCarthy, all of them remain available for transfer or loan, uh, but no clubs currently seem to be interested in, in them. And finally, um, it's thought that uh, two of Celtic's promising uh, young uh, defensive midfield players, Kwon from South Korea and Bozen Lawal, who is uh, now with the full Ireland squad, um, are both said to be on the verge of season-long loans away from Celtic to gain further game time and experience. Personally, was very impressed with Bozen Lowell's um, stats and performances when he was on loan last season with Fleetwood. And he came back, it would appear, a much improved player who's moved from being a player who was primarily a central defender into a player who uh, very successfully converted to also playing defensive midfield and central midfield. And his stats in the second half of the season were very, very promising in terms of his ability as a midfielder. And I think he uh, would be a player, given the fact that he can cover centre-back, right-back, and defensive midfield and central midfield would be a very useful player for Celtic to have in their squad. Um, given the fact he covers, not quite, covers quite a number of positions, and similarly, Quan had a very successful half-season loan with St Merton, uh, and was one of their star players in the post-winter break spell for St Mirren, before unfortunately getting injured just at the end of the season. So that just about brings uh, us to an end. So just a wee reminder to like, subscribe, comment as you see appropriate, and I'll be back Another day with an update on Celtic news and also a few end of season roundups um, uh, regarding Celtic as we approach the uh, downspell of the summer break prior to the transfer window opening for good. And so for today, goodbye and hail, hail.